Hello again. Today we are looking at the main melody for guitar on the rock band arrangement of the Game of Thrones main theme that I put out a while ago in preparation for the new season. Huzzah! This is actually a lot easier than the rhythm guitar part, even with all my added nuances. Remember to look in the description below if you want to see the full tab and further details for this lesson, unless you're already watching this on my blog, in which case, well done. So figure one is really easy. You're just playing the C minor bar chord and holding it for four bars. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then C major bar chord for another four bars. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And if you don't know how to play C minor and C major, go away until you do. So figures two, three, and four all rely on the same pattern they just happen in slightly different octaves, so you've only really got to learn one thing. Figure two starts on bar nine and is entirely on the A string. So we start on fret 10, which we hold for a bar before sliding down to the third fret. And then it's six, eight, 10. So I'm sort of hammering from the six to the eight and then sliding from the 8 to the 10, and then down to the 3rd again. So that's 6, hammer to the 8, and then jump to the 5th. Vibrato again. Now I will rest for 2 bars, although you can just hold that note for a total of 4 bars rather than 2. Sometimes I do that, do whatever you feel is right, I guess. So the second part of figure 2, starts on the 8th fret for one bar, and then you slide down to the 1st fret of the A string for one bar, and you follow this by a 5, 6, 8. So 5, hammer 6, slide to 8, and then you slide down to the 1 again, and then 6, 5, 3. So 6, pull off to 5, and slide down to 3, and then you vibrato again. And you can hold that for four bars, or hold it for two bars, then rest for two bars, but it should take you up to the end of figure two, which is bar 24. Now I'll play the entirety of figure two. You might be wondering at this point, and it's a fair enough question, why am I doing all of this on the A string when I could be playing in a box shape and have it much more like, you know, everything else on guitar and it'd be a lot easier. Well, the reason is that actually if you're sliding up and down on one string, it kind of sounds a little bit more like the main instrument in the theme itself, which I think is a cello. So actually sliding up and down the neck rather than sticking to a box shape makes it sound a little bit more like a cello. Figure three, which starts on bar 25, is the same pattern, except I've added in an octave. And if you don't know how to find an octave on a guitar, it's just two strings and two frets. So everything is being played like that. So I'm playing the same pattern I was with my first finger. Every note I was playing in figure two is being played with my first finger now. I am muting the D string with the palm of my first finger, and this octave, two frets, two strings high, is either being played with my third finger or my fourth finger. Sometimes I swap it out in the middle of playing this pattern. It doesn't really matter as long as you grab that note. So the other than the additional note, the only real difference here is that you can't rely on some of the articulation you were using before. So you can just about vibrato, but there's no way to do hammers or pulls. So you're just gonna have to rely on sliding. You've got to have a really strong slide for this. Figure three sounds like this. Now, it's not the hardest pattern to memorize because you've already memorized it for the other one, but actually playing that is probably the hardest thing I found about this song. I took a while on that bit. Figure four, which starts on bar 41. If you've been paying attention to the extra octave we just added in, you might have an easier time with this one because actually we're just playing that octave now, all on the G string. So we're going to start off on the 12th fret 
and then slide down to the fifth fret and then eight, 10, 12, and then five again. That bit I've changed slightly. So I'm hammering from the eighth to the 10 and then pull off again and then slide to the seven. And then 10, three, seven, eight, seven, three, five. That ending is a little different to the other bits. So that all together sounds like. And that extra bit at the end, I'm just going from the fifth fret, playing its octave, which is the eighth fret of the high E string. And I'm playing that. So eighth fret once, fifth fret twice, but palm muted. And then do that one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then with this finger, I'm grabbing the sixth fret. And it is quite hard to use your palm to mute particular notes when you're playing quite fast. But it does sound cool. And the reason I've put that in there is kind of, it's kind of like a drum fill. You're just putting something fancy in to imply the end of a section, just like you do a snare roll or a drum fill. You're implying that you're about to go on to an entirely different section, which in fact we are. So figure five, starting on bar 57, hurrah. This is a little harder to memorize, but luckily it is not as hard to play. So we're gonna start on the D string, 10th fret, and we hold that for two bars. Vibrato, of course, and then we're gonna drop down to the eighth fret for two bars. And then A string, third fret, two bars. And then we're gonna grab its fifth, which is on the fifth fret of the D string. And then I'm gonna swap fingers cheekily and go up half a step to the 6th fret on the D string and then we're going to grab its 5th which is the 8th fret of the G string and then going to go up to the 10 and the 12 and then you rest for 2 bars which takes you to the end of this section which is bar 72 so the entirety of figure 5 is Rest, 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 rest. So figure six, we are nearly there. Starting on bar 73, we are going to bend up on the B string 11th fret, a full tone. So it sounds like the 13th fret. So it sounds like this. That's what you're aiming for. So. And then vibrato as well. So that's gonna be two bars. And then you're gonna release the bend and hold the 11th fret for two bars. So that's... And then it's a jump down to the fifth fret of the G string. And after we've held that for two bars, I'm gonna play on the B string, the eighth fret. And I'm actually gonna leave this note held out underneath it. The reason being that when you play these two together, you're playing a power chord. Not only is it a power chord, it's a C power chord, and this song is in C, so it sounds all cool and stuff. And then you're gonna slide down to the G string, to the first fret, hold that. And then, this is bar 83 by the way, you're gonna grab the fourth fret of the B string for one bar, and then the fret below it. And I'm also gonna bend that slightly because it's all tense and cool and stuff. And then you're gonna grab the fifth fret of the G string and hold it for four bars. And then the absolute very end of the entire thing is you're gonna grab this double stop, which is the middle two strings, D and G, fifth fret, and you're gonna vibrato and then slide out. So that's the entire song. Here is the entirety of figure six for you.
that is it. Feel free to explore playing these notes in a more guitar-like way in the, the box shape. Um, I happen to like jumping up and down the fretboard, especially with something as simple as this because it makes me feel like I'm doing more, I guess. It looks a little more impressive and I can do it, so it's fine. If you haven't checked out the rhythm guitar lesson or indeed the actual full cover, then both of those are about to be linked to and I fully encourage you to enjoy them. Uh, do subscribe, do like, do comment and all the usual stuff. I'll see you next time.